Hey everybody, welcome to uh, the live feed here, live streaming on Facebook. As you know, this is going to be uh, also up on YouTube. I'm Jeff Antoniak. I appreciate you following me on these videos. This is the sixth video in this process of me getting ready for some gigs with the Baltimore Symphony. It's a great new, actually, world premiere uh, arrangement of Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Not the suite, but the entire Nutcracker, 90 minutes of music. And uh, so, yeah, I'm getting ready uh, for all this stuff. And as I'm listening and researching and practicing more, I'm finding that a lot of the melodies, these you know important themes that everybody knows from the Nutcracker, I'm finding in my parts, solo parts. Um, so today I'm going to be playing a little baritone um, and playing through some of these themes that I have written here, a la Harry Carney, who was the baritone player with Ellington, of course. Uh, by the way, I know a lot of you are noticing my picture back there. That's pretty good, right? The Big Lebowski. Uh, I bought that for myself for my 50th birthday present, uh, an original watercolor of, uh, of the guys. That's pretty awesome, right? It's probably why uh, about half of you are tuning in just to check out my artwork. I'll put something else up there next time. So um, this first, uh, let me just play this theme for you. It's really one of the first things you hear after the overture. It's the lighting of the Christmas tree, or it's called different things in different languages, I guess. Um, so this, this theme, let me play it for you. This is just what I see on the music here. <laughs> So it turns out, as I listened to what the composer had in mind with this new orchestration, that used to be in tempo, kind of faster uh, in the original version, it's strings. So with me, it's solo saxophone for, I think, four measures, then the orchestra comes in behind me. So this is a, obviously a rearrangement, reorchestration. So um, it's not the hardest theme in the world, aside from some funny intervallic jumps down that, that are hard to do on the baritone for me right now because of the overtone stuff going on. complicated rhythm changes tunes all day long, but the idea is this is essentially an orchestral excerpt, plus I'm going to be following the conductor on this, so I don't really have a sense of how fast or slow. It says freely at 80. That could be anything. So, um, so I'm preparing this in a number of different ways. Since I know it's solo, I can probably, you know, uh, Ellington it up a little bit with the vibrato and with the bending and everything else. <laughs> So I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have for that tempo-wise, but you get the idea. Um, so this is the kind of stuff I'm working on. Essentially these simple melodies that are the most important thing in the world for an orchestral kind of gig like this. My son was actually uh, playing, playing piano. My 13-year-old son is going to be playing piano at an Italian dinner at school. So he wanted to learn some Italian tunes. So I printed out some songs from a fake book I had. Just simple, you know, a simple D Dorian melody with chord changes, and he can figure out what to do from there. So he wanted to hear the song. So we go to YouTube, first thing that comes up is Pavarotti singing this tune. It's like on the page, there's nothing to it, right? It's a simple sort of folk song. Well, and then there's, there's Pavarotti singing it, right? So this is interesting for me to be looking at some pretty simple stuff on the page and understanding like, wow, okay, I need to do something with this. So here's movement 12F. Um, and and it's got this very simple thing, and I, I've heard from the MIDI mock-up that the composer sent me um, that I'm going to be playing with flutes, piccolos, I think maybe a clarinet or an oboe in there. I 
actually played some wrong notes. Uh, when I zigged when I should have zagged. Uh, so again, are, are they going to follow me on style? Is it supposed to be, you know, the interpretation of this could be a million things. So I'm working on these simple, simple melodic things actually more so than I am on the complicated stuff. You know, the, what would look complicated on the page stuff. Just trying to get these melodies together. And that's interesting because I talked last time about the difference between being a craftsman and an artist. And that's just sort of an interesting philosophical thing I like thinking about and talking about. It helps me in my teaching and jazz band master class, jazz teacher training. So, um, you know, here I'm, you know, definitely working on my craftsman chops and playing this instrument that I don't have a lot of recent experience on. So I'm having a lot of fun just playing these simple melodies and try to make something really big out of them. So anyway, thank you for, uh, for tuning in and listening and thinking through this stuff with me. If you have any thoughts, observations, that's great. I'd love to get into any discussions you want to get into. Uh, there's a lot of topics I want to be thinking about and talking about and playing, including improvising. I've got improvising in almost half of this whole thing. So there's a whole lot of that going on, stylistic concerns, going back and forth between vintage instruments and more modern instruments. There's a lot to think about and talk about. So thanks for your time, and uh, we'll see you again later this week. Bye.